wanted to bring you on to talk about all the craziness that's happening in the precious metals market. Uh, you know, a lot of people lately online have been talking about why is, you know, the the gold prices are going higher, but you see the the, the the divergence in silver prices in the mining sector. Uh, what what are you seeing right there? Why is silver and gold uh, lagging? Well, let's unpack that. Uh, let's make one question into sort of four questions. Uh, I, I think you are starting to see a, a movement in, in the gold price, and I think it's delayed. Uh, I think uh, the circumstances that are conducive to a move in the gold price have been around for three or four years. They're not new. But the response to the market is new. Uh, people's expectation of the future is set in, their, in the immediate, not the distant past, and not around history. We've been through 40 years of benign economic climate, ending, I believe, in 2022. And I think it's, the, it's, it's taken the market a while to react to negative real interest rates, to inflation, to debt and deficits. And I think it's that dawning realization, particularly among non-US-centric central banks, uh, to understand that gold is an important portfolio diversifier. And Ivan, I want to say right now that as an investor myself, as a speculator, I don't care at all about the movement of gold from $2,000 to $2,150 or $2,200. Right. I own gold personally because I'm afraid it's going to go to <laughs> seven dollars or $8,000. Uh, the move that we've seen so far may be the end of the move. I don't know. That's not why I own gold. I don't own it as a trading sardine. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I, you know, I own it as an eating sardine. Yeah, uh, that's right. And I really, truly do not own it because I think it might go to 2,500. So let's talk about that. You know, let's let's get that out of the way, first of all. Right. The frustration around the silver speculators uh, has occurred for as long as I have been on earth. <laughs> I don't know why. I have my suspicions, but momentum in a precious metals market is established by gold perhaps because the fear buyer is more motivated than the greed buyer. Right. After gold has moved, then in the middle of a gold bull market, when the narrative has been established by gold, silver, perhaps because of its lower unit price, moves later. It moves further and it moves faster once it moved. But in every market that I've been ar around, except for the false breakout, the, you know, the sort of um, Reddit precious metals breakout uh, right. in 2020, uh, when the speculative stocks uh, led all the commodities, I've never seen a market where gold didn't have to establish the momentum and silver to fall in. Make no mistake, in my experience, and I've been through several bull markets, if the momentum gets established by silver, by pardon, pardon me, by gold, uh, silver will exceed all but the greediest of expectations. Right. It'll just take a while. Now, Let's go to the delta between the metal performance uh, and the share price performance. First of all, this is consistent with all prior bull markets. The metals have to lead. It's important to know that when the metals lead, there's a lag. In the case of the gold price moving up from, say, a year ago at $1,850 to $2,150, what people need to understand is that although the gold price has moved up, the prices of consumables, the prices of the cost of producing gold has also moved up. Oh, so right, the yeah. margins haven't moved up in lockstep with the gold price. It's important to know that if you look at the cash flow statements, uh, the quarterly cash flow statements of major gold producers, although the gold price has moved up, it hasn't yet been reflected. Why in, Why is that, uh, Rick? Sorry to cut you off. Like, why do you see that? You prices, know, even at, prices for labor have been going up. Uh, okay. Social rents, including taxes, have been going up. Energy costs have been going up, and the price of consumables like cement and steel have yeah. gone up. Yeah. So it hasn't yet been reflected in the margins because costs have gone up the same way that prices have gone up. Make no mistake, it will be reflected if we keep these if we keep these prices, but it hasn't been reflected yet. <clears throat> the ugly truth, too, that's really important for your listeners to understand is that the historic performance of the sector uh, as companies, not as gold companies, but as companies, has been dismal. Yeah. In the year 2000 to 2010, the decade, pardon me, the gold price goes from what, 250 bucks to 1900 bucks, a sevenfold increase. And the free cash flow per share 
of companies on the Philadelphia Gold and Silver uh, Index fell. Hmm. It took skill to turn a sevenfold increase in the selling price of the commodity into a decrease in free cash flow. Now, my hope is that the managements who presided over that have all been thanked and excused. Right. Uh, and investors <laughs> are holding the industry to higher account. But my suggestion to your listeners is that their first investment in gold and silver has to be in themselves. Because if you invest in the sector itself over two decades, you will go broke. Wow. You need to invest in individual people, in individual companies. Uh, because about, I don't know, maybe 20% of the majors and, and maybe 3% of the juniors generate enough performance that they add legitimacy and even luster to a sector that's performed as horrifically as mining has in the past. I've managed to make a lot of money mm -hmm. as a mining investor and a lot of speculator. It's been a lot of work uh, and I've had to be very patient, but you won't find me buying the whole sector. Uh, <laughs> I've learned. I buy individual companies and I invested in myself for at least 10 years before I learned how to do it. Your listeners are going to have to learn to invest in their selves too, so that they understand how in movie parlance to separate the good from the bad and the ugly. Yeah. So that's like perfectly said, Rick. So when you're investing in yourself and you're looking at a mining company, what's the first thing you look at when you look at the management? Do you want to see like no debt? What are the top five things you look at? Well, management is the first. Uh, I want to be associated with managers who have been successful in the past. Yeah. I agree. And successful in approximately the same thing that they're doing today. If ma if management describes their success as having operated uh, a gold mine in Archean, 2000 year old, uh, 2 billion year old terrain in French speaking Quebec, but what they're doing is exploring rather than producing for copper gold in 15 million year old accreted terrain in Spanish speaking Peru, the skill sets aren't transferable. <laughs> right, right. So the skill sets around the people must be appropriate to the task at hand. Uh, I, I think too, that people need to invest in scale. Everything that can go wrong with a big mine can go wrong with a small mine, hmm. but a small mine can never make you big money. Too many investors screw around with stuff that doesn't matter. And small minds don't matter. If you're going to take big risks, take big risks for big money. Specifically, if the target doesn't have an in situ value of recoverable minerals exceeding two and a half billion dollars, say a million ounce gold deposit or an 80 million ounce silver deposit, don't bother. Right. Just don't bother. Then it becomes all common sense. In the exploration business, really what you're doing is employing technology to answer unanswered questions. What's the most important unanswered question? How long does it take? What's the probability of a yes answer? What's a yes answer worth? How much money will it take? And do you have enough money to get me to a yes answer? <laughs> this is common sense. Right. Most speculators employ a strategy called got a hunch, bet a bunch. They assume because silver is on the name of a share certificate somewhere that the company has silver rather than looking for silver. If the silver price goes up and you don't have any silver, what difference does it make?